good afternoon, everybody. So, I admit most of you are probably going to look at me and say, why is he talking about nothing? What, what could possibly be interesting about nothing? And you're probably questioning my choice of topics here to speak of. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to try something. I really want you to try this with earnestly and with a lot of genuine thought. I want you to try and think about nothing. No light, no sound, just nothing. Just spend some time. It's, it's difficult, almost impossible. I mean, I was, I was sitting and I was trying to think about nothing. I spent a long time on it. I was like, how, how do I explain this? And that, that's kind of what led me to do a lot of these things. But I started asking myself some questions like, what if nothing is something? Then what could it be? And where could it be? And the inner mathematician in me called, and I'm not going to get into a lot of the mathematical stuff. It's, it gets quite complicated, but this was an idea I really liked, the idea that you could take zero and like twist it and create this illusion that it would be an infinity, something. It'd be something that you could see, understand, or, you know, view. And but I didn't want to just stop there. If, we, if we're so bound by this idea of nothing, I mean, if it's so prevalent, then we should be able to see it everywhere. And I, while I was thinking about it, I was like, well, what if we do this while we think? And I have a challenge for you, and this is a challenge about your focus. So I want you to watch the video and listen to some of the instructions, and I want to see your reactions to this. This is a test. Are you kidding me? Um, I was not intending this to be a patience test, but evidently you can focus on the s staring screen here. Sure. How many times does the white team pass the rubber band ball? If you answered 13 passes, you are correct. So how many of you counted the right number of passes? How many of you saw the man in the blue shirt? How many of you saw the gorilla? So, in psychology, this is known as a selective attention test. The idea is you focus so much on one subject, and this idea you're told, you're told to focus on how many times does that white team pass the rubber band ball. And while you're focusing on that, that, that consumes your thoughts. You're like, I have to count this number of passes. And you start noticing less and less of everything else. So some of you may have gotten the ball passes and the man in the blue shirt. Some of you may have saw the gorilla and the passes. Some of you may have gotten even the gorilla and the blue shirt, but almost none of you got all three. If you did, congratulations, but not many of us can do that. So, when I was thinking about, like, well, why is this happening? I, I came to this theory that when we're focusing on something, that's the something we're focusing on. And then there's this little bit of margin around it, the fringe, where you, you kind of see it and you don't really register it. But after a certain area, it, it might as well not exist. It's nothing. And you can focus on the video, but how many of you know what the color of the paint was on the background? It wouldn't matter. But if you focused on that, then it might not even matter. The number of ball passes might not exist. Everything exists of what you look on it. You make the subconscious decision to choose what is something and what is nothing. And together they make this larger everything. So I, I took this idea and I was attempting to apply it to something else. And I came across some um, art. And I do a little bit of art. I'm not a full-fledged artist, but my mom is, and I'm very, I'm very well acquainted with a lot of this stuff. 
So I started getting into the idea of negative space. And I kind of want you to take a look at this uh, image and see what you think. I think it represents the idea perfectly. Um, with negative space, you have this idea of there's two spaces in arts. You have the positive space, which in this case is what's filling this void. And this is the void, everything that isn't that. And then you have the negative space, which is the void itself. And by manipulating the positive space, you can change how the negative space works. And by creating it perfectly, you want to fill the blank. You want to define the negative space. You want to make nothing something as part of a larger everything. And there are many examples of this. So we're going to flip through one. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, it's the Spartan Golf Club. The person, the company that made this had two ideas in mind. They wanted to transfer the idea of their business through an image. And so you have this image of this golfer swinging his golf club. I'm not exactly sure if he's swinging it up or down. I hope he's not swinging it up. I don't know what you'd achieve with that. But when the image of that also creates this image of a Spartan helmet, the space in between the golf club and the swing and the person makes the helmet with that making the line and that area in between his arms makes the eye. Together, it's the Spartan helmet, but it's also someone golfing. <laughs> so this is, this is a little bit of an easier idea if that was a little bit more difficult. This piece is titled Songbird. It's not hard to see why. The positive space is this phonograph, something we associate with music. And then the other space is the bird. The artist cleverly used this little tidbit here to kind of complete the image of the bird, and the little bends, and that almost appears like it'd be a wing. Even though this isn't part of the image per se, it's part of the art. And this is a famous, well-known one. And what I want to get with this is your positive and negative space don't have to be defined as, oh, this has to be positive space, this has to be negative space. Um, but what I've noticed with this is your eyes tend to draw more quickly to the positive space than to the negative space. Now you can flip this image around, I don't have it, but you can flip it around and make this black and this white. And your first thought will go, I see the chalice, not the two faces. Not everyone does this, it just is a general idea. Um, and this idea of negative space, it's not just constrained to the art world, just to what we would see at an exhibition and stuff like that. We also see this with more common companies, such as FedEx. How many of you know of the arrow in between the E and the X for the FedEx logo? Some of you, which is good, not everybody, but it adds a subliminal message to the logo. It makes you think, oh, FedEx is going to deliver my package further. It's I indicating progress, indicating movement. And it's that negative space, that nothingness, that carries this meaning. And so it's not, just, even, it's not just art either, not just company logos, not just anything like that. Think of a sentence. So I want you to read this sentence, and I'm going to give you about five, six seconds. Okay, how many of you could read it in that time? Okay, a lot of fast readers here. But was it difficult? Okay, is this easier? So, the spaces in between the letters, and, the, and the, even the examples of the semicolons and the colons, the pauses, both of the eye and of the mouth, of the spoken or the thought, the thought in word, I, whatever, the, whatever you're thinking, those pauses, those spaces helps break up a sentence, helps break up a line and makes it easier to read. It's really, it's kind of almost nothing. It's not quite, we give it a name, but it's nothing in between these. And that's what determines them. Even the letters themselves have nothing in it. The E needs that little space in between that and that to let us know it's an E and not just this weird symbol with a line coming through it. And, ooh, is this clicking? So I'm a musician, and as musicians, we use that, this idea of nothingness, of rest, quite a lot. And not just of all voices, it can be of one particular voice. The Beatles did this incredibly well. Um, this is Beatles' Let It Be, and I want you to listen and relax. Let it be, let it be, yeah, let it be. 
So, even though there were no vocals there, and this was part of a larger transition in which the vocals were cut out, were reduced to nothing to replace with just these instrumentalist voices, the way the instrumentalist voices are positioned and the void they fill makes us feel as though there are vocals, that the instruments are almost singing. We could come up with lyrics where none exist, and it flows into where lyrics are. And I, I found this, well, as, as a jazz musician, that's what improvisation is. You're coming up, you're adding, you're taking a place where there is nothing originally, and you're going to add to that. You're adding a voice, a negative space into the positive space of all the backgrounds and everything like that to add and make a musical melody or song. We can, now this is a rendition of Radioactive. In music, sometimes you get something caused like a complete drop. Most of you who know dubstep, I don't agree with it, but those of you who do know what that is, and uh, this is a good example of it. So when the music stops, when there's no noise, it, it is my personal opinion, and music is a very much a subjective thing. We all have our different opinions as to what's happening in music. But in my personal opinion, I feel as though it changes the tension of the piece. You're left adrift. You're not sure if whether to expect nothing more or something else. And regardless, that period where you're left adrift, where there's nothing to, there's no foundation, there's nothing for you to climb on or to listen to, that's just as powerful, that's just as important as all the rest of the music. So I want, I want you guys to try this. Let's just stop. Our everyday lives are so filled with stuff, with some things, we can be contacted at a moment's notice through cell phones, through social media, or anything like that. We can read news at a moment's glance. What happened just one minute ago, halfway across the globe? So much so that when nothing's happening, something's wrong. And me personally, I get this a lot as a student. When I'm not working on something, when I'm not pushing my boundaries at every given moment, I feel like I'm not being productive. Like, there's something wrong, like I'm not achieving anything. And yet, it's the moments that we take break, that we don't do anything, that are valuable. When you take a break from working on an essay, when you take a break from writing a story, from folding origami, from playing a chess move, or even meditating, taking a break from the world around you, those are all just as important as working, as focusing, as, you know, doing in what the, uh, one of our, fir our first speakers said, having the monkey thoughts going around. It's just as important to not think, to focus on yourself instead. And so I, gu I guess what I'm saying here is that nothing is something and something worth sharing. Have a great summer. Thank you.